Hello, welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. My name is Rod Gatlin. I'm with the Charlotte Woodcarvers Club in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today I'll be talking to you about the showcase of wood carvings in Charlotte. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, it's April the 6th, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, as always, we appreciate you all coming in to join us live today on these meetings. Uh, we do these meetings to encourage other carvers and to promote things that are coming up in the carving community. Uh, and today is no different. Today we're going to have Rod Gatlin on. Uh, it's going to be talking to us a little bit about the uh, Charlotte Wood Carving Show that's coming up. Uh, the dates on that is April 26th through the 28th, so it's at the end of the month. Uh, he'll give you all the details about that. Before we get started, though, I want to remind you all about a few things. Uh, Carving the Rockies, my son here right behind me, uh, is coming up in September, September 14th and 15th. Uh, if you haven't made plans to go out there, try to go ahead and do that now. Uh, they're also going to have a caricature carving school out there the 16th through the 18th, so Monday through Wednesday after the show. Uh, there's limited seats available uh, for these classes. It's three days of classes. Uh, if anybody's interested in signing up, you need to go on the CCA website and get signed up soon because they're going to be uh, closed. And once it's closed, you'll go on a waiting list. Uh, but there's no guarantee that you're going to get into that. So uh, if you haven't signed up already and you're interested in going out there, interested in taking the classes after the show, make sure you go out on the CCA website and check it out. Um, Coming up on our meetings, I want to tell you a few things before we get started. Uh, next Saturday, we're not going to have a meeting next Saturday. I'm going to Nashville to see my daughter, uh, so we'll be off next week. Uh, we'll come back in on the 20th. Um, we have a guy from Bulgaria that's actually going to be coming in. He does some great carvings. His no, name is Tony Teneve, uh, and he's going to be coming on presenting for us. On the 27th, we're going to be down in Charlotte, uh, so it's it. We haven't determined yet if we're going to broadcast from live down there. Uh, but if we do not, I'll put it on social media. But if we do not, we'll be down to the Charlotte show. We'll report back as far as how that went after that show's over. On the uh, 4th of May, we got Christine Hill coming in. On the 11th of May, we've got Kyle York, KJ Carving, that's coming in. You can find him on Instagram. Uh, we're continuing to take names, getting people signed up. Uh, probably this summer, like we've done in the past, we'll drop back to one uh, meeting a month starting probably in June, uh, June, July, and August. We do that because it's warm outside. People have other things, family gatherings, vacation, those kind of things that they do. Um, so we'll drop back to one, one meeting a month through the summer and then pick back up uh, probably either end of August or beginning of September and go back to weekly meetings. And that's when we'll really ramp up and get ready for the CCA show out there in Colorado Springs. Uh, having said all that, Again, today we've got Rod Gatlin on. He's going to talk a little bit about the wood carving show that's coming up and uh, kind of the things that's going on down there. Uh, and then he's going to do a demonstration in between him talking about uh, what's going to be happening in Charlotte and his demonstration. We'll have Dave Stetson on, as usual, uh, doing our words of wisdom. So I just want to remind you all we haven't forgotten that. We're going to put that in the middle uh, so that Rod can get his camera adjusted and stuff like that before he does his uh, demonstration. So. Uh, Rod, we appreciate you coming on. Rod and I have been real, real good friends for a long time. Look forward to seeing him down in Charlotte. Uh, appreciate you taking time out to join us today, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Hey, Blake, how you doing? Everybody hey, else, brother. good to see you. Well, actually, I can't see you, but uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the Charlotte Woodcarvers Club and the show before we get started on the demonstration. Um, there's, And if you have any questions, uh, Please let us know so uh, Blake can get them over to me. But uh, the show's coming up April 27th to 28th. That's Saturday and Sunday, just a few weeks away. And it's our 41st annual showcase of wood carvings. As far as I know, we've only missed one year, and that was because of COVID. But uh, we've, we're expecting uh, um, quite a good turnout this year. We've had a pretty good pre-registration. I suspect we'll have uh, well over 100 carvers and... Um, up to a thousand carvings on display, maybe more. But um, just to tell you a little bit about our show, if you haven't been to our show before, uh, the country are, are different. So uh, the way we do things in Charlotte is uh, you can register and put your carvings out on Friday or Saturday morning by 30. And you can register as many carvings as you want to a point. 
but uh, all of the carvings are on display for everybody to see. So it's not just the ones that win ribbons, everything's out on display and really neat thing to be able to see all of these uh, carvings of all levels. We have novice, intermediate and open carvings on display in the same room. And uh, it's a, just a neat thing to, to go through and see. And in the same room, we also have vendors uh, selling wood carving supplies and uh, books and carvings. So um, if you haven't been before, it's it's a lot of fun. And there's other things to do while you're there. We'll have uh, a raffle going on to, with uh, 100 items and 10 silent auction items. Uh, one of the things that we're real happy to have this year in the silent auction is a finished carving by Peter Ortel. It's 22 inches tall. Uh, it's titled Putting Your Wife on a Pedestal. And uh, I think somebody's going to go away with a, a pretty carving there. Yeah, thanks for putting that up there, Blake or Dave. Uh, there's a picture of it. So uh, start uh, discussing a loan with your bank so you can come and uh, bid a lot of money on that. And thanks to Madeline Ortel for donating that to the club. Um, the show thing, we do a theme every year. And uh, this is something Lee Dukes, the founder of our club, started years ago when we first, first started doing a show. And uh, it's just kind of a fun thing. Uh, we have it up as a separate category in all three competition levels. And this year, the show theme is birds of a feather flock together. So whatever that means to you, uh, do a carving. Uh, if you still, if you haven't done one yet, do it soon. And so you can enter it in the carving contest and uh, you can win a, a prize. You'll go home with a, a Lee Dukes uh, plaque. Uh, we call that the, the Lee Dukes Award since Lee was our founder and um, some prize money as well. So. That's a neat thing we're doing, and at the show, we'll reveal the 2025 show theme as well. Um, Charlotte's a beautiful place to visit this time of year, so if you're looking for a good place to go to have a little fun and uh, see a beautiful city, uh, this is a good time to visit Charlotte. Azaleas are blooming. Uh, everything's leafed out in the trees, and uh, I guarantee warm weather and warm sun it's not going to rain, so. Uh, but if it does, we'll have a place for you to go. Um, we're going to have a food truck, so if you get hungry, there'll be a food truck right out the event. And if you're driving down, it's uh, free parking. Now, the, the event we have is at Central Piedmont Community College in the center of Charlotte, so it's close to downtown. But the good thing is it's on Saturday and Sunday, and there's not that much traffic downtown, so it's a uh, good time to have the event down there. There are restaurants around, but we, we've uh, taken the extra step of having a food truck so that you can just walk outside and get yourself a, a sandwich and a drink or whatever you want. Uh, plenty of free parking right there next to us. There's a, a three-story parking deck uh, adjacent to the building and it's free parking. So uh, now as far as hotels, someone was asking about hotels, we have a block of rooms at two hotels. One is the closest hotel to the event. It's the Fairfield Inn. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the rates are there. They do charge you a daily fee for parking. So just be aware of that and make sure you ask for the Charlotte Woodcarvers Club rate. Um, and that is walking distance. If, if you're, if you want to walk, I'd say it's probably a, um, less than a mile to walk to the event from there. If you want to drive a little, little further down the interstate, about uh, five, five miles or less down I-77 at Tybola Road, there is a hotel uh, and the name of it is Spark by Hilton. It's a, uh, looks like a good hotel. It, it, it's, uh, it's just recently changed over from a, a previous owner so they've redone it. So the room should be pretty nice there. It's probably less expensive than the Fairfield and they don't charge for parking there to my knowledge. Uh, but like I say, it's a little bit of a hike down there. There will be other carvers staying there. And again, we've got a block of rooms there. And I think the block of rooms is 95 or $99 per room, depending on whether 
single or double beds. But uh, check that out if you uh, if you don't mind driving a little bit. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, the uh, another item we have in the raffle this year it's we we call it the raffle. We have two parts of it. We got raffle tickets and we've got a silent auction. And we have 10 silent auction items. One of them, many of you might be familiar with the friendship canes. And we've taken a twist on that and we're gonna have a friendship lamp. Instead of uh, taking home a friendship cane with a bunch of carvings on it that you're gonna sit over in the corner and look at once or twice a year, we figure we'll turn it into a lamp and then you can uh, turn it on and off every day. Uh, block that's participated in this. We've got uh, 15 or 16 carvers, I think, that have done blocks. Five of them are CCA members. So, you know, you're going to have some carvings on there and it's, it's looking pretty good. I saw some of it uh, recently. It's a, it's an amazing piece. Anyway, we'll have uh, that as a silent auction item. And all these items are raising money for the club so we can pay to do this event every year and uh, hopefully break even. It's a, it's a big event for us. We have a group of about 15 people that just meet all year round pretty much to plan this event. And uh, it's uh, I think it's gonna be a really good one this year. You can try and make it if you can. Um, Blake, what am I missing so far? There's a question in the chat, Rod. Um, Bobby wants to know, how does the Tom Wolf carbon competition work? What size wood do you get? And do you have a schedule on uh, who will be doing demonstrations there? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we do five different demonstrations. They're about an hour long. They're in a separate classroom. And I think there's gonna be three on Saturday and two on Sunday or vice versa. I'm not sure. Um, the uh, the last time I spoke with the guy that's uh, putting that together, I don't think I have, he had all the uh, instructors confirmed yet, but I know uh, Dwayne Gosnell is going to be doing a class. Um, I believe Michelle Parsons and Bob Statlander um, will be doing either relief or um, another subject. I can't remember what it was now. And uh uh, the guy that uh, is known as Cartoons to Carvings, I can't remember his name right now, and I apologize, but... Uh, Richard Holden. Richard, yeah. I think he's going to be at our show for the first time, this year, or at least presenting for the first time this year at one of our seminars. So uh, that ought to be pretty interesting. Uh, now, you asked about the carving competition. This is something we do every year, on, usually on Saturday and Sunday. Mitch Carr this for us and uh thanks to mitch he, he brings the wood and he brings the prizes he does this on his own it, it used to be uh, run by uh, tom wolf and mitch would help him out some but uh since tom has passed on uh, mitch has taken over and fun you, you get uh, a small piece of wood i can't guarantee what size it'll be because mitch brings that and uh you, you sign up in advance go by mitch's booth when you get in and uh see if you can sign up for that competition bring your tools and a glove and you'll just sit around in a circle and uh, you'll um, carve whatever you want to in that probably hour and a half. And at the end of that time, uh, you turn your carving in uh, there. There'll be uh, some people there to judge them and they'll be judged. Mainly they're going to look at the first few items and pick out first, second, third, but uh, everyone gets a prize. So, it's a fun time to sit around and carve with some uh, good carvers and uh, tell some dumb stories and uh, then uh, end up with a carving at the end and, and see what everybody else is carving too. It's a lot of fun. I know uh, Blake's enjoyed that several times. Um, did, does that answer that question? Yeah, I think you covered it. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's see. If you decide you want to join our club, you can, uh, we have started doing a lot more classes than we've done in the past in Charlotte. Uh, we just finished up a class with Rich Weatherby that went well. We had a dozen people in that class. Um, we've got uh, people in the club that are doing 
classes probably at least once a month there's somebody doing a class and uh, the cost of these is, is pretty low most of the time uh, we're trying to recognize that some carvers can't afford a lot of money on classes but we want people to have the chance to learn to advance in carving anyway so uh, if you get if you join the club you find out about those uh, scheduled classes and it's thirty dollars a year to join the club and you do get some discounts, I think, on uh, entering the show and so forth. So it, it's worth it if you're going to continue carving. Uh, we have a monthly meeting on Saturdays. Now, we meet every Tuesday in Charlotte. But if, So if you're ever in Charlotte and you want to come to one of our meetings Tuesday, we meet from 9 in the morning till about 6 at night at uh, um, Carmel Presbyterian Church. But uh, if you can't make it on... On a Tuesday, and uh, you do you are available and in the area on a Saturday. We meet the last Saturday of every month from nine to twelve. Uh, this coming uh, meeting will be at the show, so we won't be meeting that time. But uh, most months we'll be meeting on the last Saturday of the month. Um, let's see the. We have a lot of prizes in the show this year. We've got $2,500 in competition prizes, as well as a few other uh, non-cash uh, prizes. So uh, if, if you have seen our brochure, this is what it looks like I'm looking at it here. It's got uh, a list of all the cash prizes. Uh, the best of show prize is $475. Um, if you've seen our brochure around, uh, we try every year. We try to put the carving that won from the previous year. This is a, a picture of the David Boone carving that won Best of Show last year. That's a phenomenal piece. So uh, come and take some of our money. We'd like to give it away. Um, let's see what else. We've got carvers coming from uh, probably around 15 different states. Uh, there's even a guy that comes from Puerto Rico every year. So uh, there'll be people there from all over the country. So it's a good chance to, to meet some other carvers and uh, talk about things and, and learn from each other and just make friends. Uh, we got several vendors. We've got uh, Kling Spore Woodworking, we've got Statlander uh, Wood Carving Supplies, the Love Guy, uh, Arnold Smith will be there. Uh, Bill Johnson is a chip carver. He's going to be there. Uh, Mitch Cartledge. Um, in our April newsletter, I think there, if you get that, there's a, a pretty good listing of the vendors that are going to be there. Uh, several wood carving clubs will be there. Uh, some of them will have actual uh, tables with, so you can talk to them. If you're from their area and you're interested in joining their club, there's the Triad Wood Carvers Club from Winston-Salem, uh, Catawba Valley Wood Carvers from Hickory, uh, Piedmont Woodcarvers Club will be there in some capacity from Greenville, South Carolina, and there, there may be some others as well. Um, real quickly, some of the auction items we're going to have are, uh, in addition to Peter's carving, will be a, a, a Fordham Centennial Special for us, a $350 value, uh, a skill saw, 10-inch miter saw, um, a new Proxim um, belt sander, a uh, 12-inch labyrinth plate. Oh, yeah. Bill Johnson has carved, uh, chip carved uh, a 12-inch labyrinth plate and donated that. It's a beautiful piece. Omni jig, 24-inch dove, dovetail machine, uh, um, and a few other items. So uh, a lot of neat stuff on the raffle table. Had any other questions, uh, Blake? No, I was going to bring up that uh, those of you who know who they are, Badger State Blades will be there this year. Uh, I think they're driving down for the show and uh, setting up. I know Helby's been there in the past, and they're not going to be available to be there. So uh, I think Badger State Blades is taking their place. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. And um, if you're coming to Inner Carvings, you can register the, the day of the show. You don't have to pre-register. I think there's a little bit of an upcharge if you do, but you can register on Friday afternoon. We'll start taking carvings in around 3 o'clock up until 7 p.m. on Friday. 
and uh, also on Saturday morning until 8.30. So from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., you can also register carvings. And at that point, we'll start judging. So we'll cut off the uh, entries at 8.30 a.m. And then we've got a set of eight judges who will uh, go around in a pair of two each. So we'll try to get the judging done fairly quickly, but it takes usually up until around noon before the judging's totally complete. During that time, we've got the competition roped off. So you can still visit the um, uh, vendors and talk to other carvers and go to the uh, silent auction, but uh, you can't get into the competition area until we get finished with the judging. So we try to get it done pretty quick. Do we have any uh, questions from anybody in the group today before we uh, we turn it over to Dave Stetson for his words of wisdom? Okay, while Rod's getting set up, uh, he's going to do a demonstration for us. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to our very own Dave Stetson. Uh, he's going to offer up some words of wisdom to us today. So, Dave, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Morning, and all. A um, couple of notes from a uh, couple of quotes from uh, Maya Angelou again. I, lo I love that lady. Um, she she has written some really neat stuff, and it it's stuff to to make you think. Uh, or makes me think, and and I need all the help I can get in that area. Um, one thing she says is, uh, do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. And if you think about that, that applies to what we do as woodcarvers as well. You know, do the best you can until you know better. And she also made a quote says, we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. And that applies to everything in carving and life as well. So we may encounter many defeats, but we must not be defeated. All right. Thank you, Dave. Um, Remind you all that um, we will not be meeting next Saturday. Uh, we'll meet again on the 20th. So come back 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 20th. We'll have Tony Teneve on uh, to do a demonstration that day. Uh, again, Rod, we appreciate you coming on today. We're going to go ahead and give it back to Rod. He's going to do a demonstration on carving a butt head. Uh, we'll let him explain to you exactly what that is, what kind of wood that you need to do it, and the process he goes through to carve. So, Rod, we'll go ahead and turn it back to you. Actually, Blake, if you help me find him, I've lost him in my shuffle of things. I got you right here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I thought we'd just have a little fun today. I, I love doing these little butt heads. They're, they're quick and easy to do. Um, I've got a few of them here I'll just put out that I've done. They're, uh, I've done them in basswood. It uh, doesn't really matter what kind of wood you use as long as you can carve it. But uh, the reason they're butt heads is they have each has a little crack on the bottom. And they're they're a lot of fun and that made me laugh the first time I saw one. I thought, well, that looks like something fun to do. I'll give it a try. Um, it's not my idea. The the lady who came up with this, as far as I can tell, I looked it up and on uh, Google and Facebook. Um, Nancy. Uh, darn, what's your last name, Blake? Anybody? <laughs> anyway, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, she's got a website out there or, or Facebook page that uh, she's got a, a bunch of neat carvings on. But here, I'll just show you a few that I've done real quick. And uh, the fun about these things is you can do them pretty quick. And they don't take much time. At, so it's a great way to try new things if you haven't done something before. Like if you've never carved an open mouth, uh, give it a try because you don't have much to lose here. You're not, you're not paying much in the wood and your time's fairly, uh, there's not very much time involved in these either. And uh, 
I'll, I'll talk a little bit about painting too, if you want me to, when I'm done here, there's not a lot of paint to them either, but uh, they're each about three inches long. The, the first ones I carved were about two inches and um, that works, you know, it's just whatever you want to do with what you've got. It's anywhere from two to three inches on a one by one stick. Now that's what I start with is just a, a one by one by 12. Uh, just easier to hold if you do several of them together. You can do one by itself and it'd be one by one by three or two or whatever you want to do. If you want to do something uh, that's that's longer than three inches, I would just suggest getting a little bit thicker piece of wood just because of the rounding. So I've got one here that I've um, got to I kind of show you a progression here. Um, when I start them, I... I just round over a little bit on the top and the bottom, and then I go into a corner and start the nose and the eyes, and then um, I'll figure out what kind of mouth and start uh, putting the eyes in, and then eventually start putting in a little bit more detail. So uh, without further ado, I'll just start carving. If you guys have any questions, just let uh, Blake or Dave know, and they'll let me know. Um, since I don't have anybody to talk to, I'll probably just kind of ramble on here about things as I think of them. Um, I hope you guys will come to the show. It's it's a lot of fun. The uh, carbon competition we do with Mitch is really something I think a lot of people look forward to every year, not just because uh, it's fun to sit down and carve with your friends, but a lot of people come just to watch it because it is kind of a, an inner if uh, if you're not a carver or even if you are just to see these guys sit down sit around and carve they carve fast too i i always try to compete but uh man some of these guys carve way too fast hey rod somebody put in the chat that that was nancy tuttle yes uh, tuttle, thank you yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nancy's got a, a great uh, Facebook page. She she carves in cue balls. Like she gets these, uh, I guess, porcelain, the old-timey cue balls and carves these wild faces into them. Check it out if you get a chance. Now, before I go too far on here, I'm going to get a pencil. Start thinking about where I'm going to put a nose. I go anywhere from about, from the top, I go down um, anywhere from a third to a halfway, depending on what I want to do. So I'll put my eyes in about here probably. And while I'm thinking about it, I might just kind of set up another one too. And I'm gonna put the nose and eyes a little bit higher. I like carving the edges off because these things can dig into your hands if you hold them a long time. Those edges are tough on your hands. Get a different knife out here. First time I've carved under a camera, so it's uh, taking a little bit of adjustment. And Rod, I know we talked about it before the meeting, but tell everybody how long you've been carving. Um, I've been carving about 25 years. I started, uh, I guess, around 1999. There was a, uh, I was going up to the recreation center near my house and swimming on Saturdays and uh, saw in their newsletter that they were going to be having a carving class there. So I think it was going to be a week or two later. So I just showed up on that night and there was uh, maybe five or six people there. The guy who was obviously an instructor says, well, I didn't know you were coming. I said, well, I didn't know I was supposed to tell you. He said, sit <laughs> down here. We'll get you started. 
<laughs> we became good friends. Uh, Stan Lar was his name. He's going on now, but uh, Stan was a good good instructor. Got me started. Now, once I get to this point, I've, I've got the nose kind of roughed out there. I don't need any of this wood up here, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that all off. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. My hand's not covering it up. Same below the nose. This wood down here is really not necessary now, so I can take a big chunk of that off. Since I'm working with a small piece of wood here, it's pretty easy to make bold cuts. That's one thing I've tried to tell new carvers is don't be afraid to make bold cuts. And that's another thing here. If, uh, it's a good way to practice because if you're a little timid in making cuts, try to get over that and just make cuts and see where it goes. And if you screw it up, you can start over. So kind of just putting a little bit of area here where I want to put some eyes eventually. Is How's this camera working out, uh, Blake? Is Can everybody see you okay? Yeah, I think you're good. Maybe okay. shift a little uh, to center. Over there here? Yeah, okay. that way you don't eat off the side of the page there. Yeah. So tell them what I'll come back with if I do. And Rod, did you talk about how many categories there are in the show? Uh, that people can enter yeah. carvings into. Yeah, we've re we've. Uh, if you've been to our show before, we've kind of upgraded or changed, I should say, the numbering system. We had a lot of since we'd added uh, categories over the years. We had like category six used to be caricatures, and then we came up with category six A and six B and six C. So we we renumbered all that and. Uh, so we've now got uh, 41 categories. There are no A's and B's in there yet. So hopefully there won't be. But uh, we do have several caricature categories over here, probably six or seven of them. And for the first time this year, we have instructor assisted as a category. Um, we just never have put that on the list before, but a lot of people come in with programs they've done in classes and want to enter them. And so in, in novice, intermediate, and in open, we have the instructor-assisted category. Now, you can put any carving from any class in there. So you're, you may be entering a caricature and competing with birds or something else like that, but it's, uh, it's all instructor-assisted. If you're, if you're a caricature carver, which most of you are, I'm guessing. Um, the um, We do have a rough out category. It doesn't mean you can't enter a rough out in another category, but that rough out category is not eligible for best of uh, competition level or best of show. But the prize is a um, Mitch Cartledge rough out or whatever he wants to give away basically for that competition. Uh, again, Mitch is a big supporter of our club and we appreciate what he does. Now, when you get to this point, be careful down here where you're separating this piece from the rest of the wood. You don't want to go too far down there until you get some of these others carved in because then you'll, you'll carve your handle off. Um, at this point, it wouldn't be a big deal because I've still got plenty of wood left, but um, I'll probably move on to doing a little bit more detail once I get some of this roughed out further. This back is going to have to come down a good bit because there's no detail on it really except for that butt crack. And the butt crack is probably the last thing you're going to carve because until you get it disconnected from the rest of the wood, it's kind of hard to carve it in there. You could do half a crack, I guess. Who thought you'd be talking about crack at this thing? 
And Ron, you taught this class uh, at the barn in North Carolina. They're teaching classes down there about every month. Is that right? Uh, they're trying to have one person at a month down there. Uh, Jerry Clark runs that. He hasn't had anybody this month because he, he was busy taking some other classes and uh, he won't have anybody, or that was in March, excuse me, and nobody in April because of the show. I think he's going to get back to it in May. And uh, Pat, you're doing a class over there, aren't you? Pat Coffee. Pat Coffee's doing a class sometime this summer, but if you go to uh, Facebook and look up uh, the barn, it'll probably come up. It's That's what they call just the barn. It's an old barn that was kind of converted for uh, weddings years ago. They never had any weddings there, but uh, the new owner uh, lets Jerry use it for carving events and We've had some good instructors up there. Hey, another, that, question, another question in the chat. Somebody wants to know if instructor assisted classes includes video instruction. You know, we've got a lot of video uh, classes and stuff going on now. So is yeah, that included question. as well? Uh, no, you don't. You wouldn't want to put that in uh, instructor assisted. You, I suppose you could, but you don't have to, I guess. Let me put it that way. Um, we defined instructor assisted because we knew this would come up. So uh, I'll just read it to you from the brochure because uh, we were pretty specific about that. Instructor assisted carvings where an instructor has physically assisted the carver, not eligible for best of show or division. So as long as an instructor has not put his knife on your carving, then you don't have to enter it in instructor assisted. I think that's the question, isn't it? Yep. Okay, I've got to a point here where I want to start thinking about what kind of uh, expression I want to put on this guy. I had a pencil around here somewhere, and we go. So, if I do a big old smile on this guy, put him in with a pencil first. Is the lighting okay here? Yeah, I think you're good, bro. And my hands are covering it up, though. No, you're good, man. Okay, okay. So something like that. Once I got that figured out, I can take a gouge. This is, uh, I can see, this is probably about a three quarter inch. Uh, I'm, let's see if it's got a number on it. Uh, this one doesn't have a number on it. I'd say it's about a number five, something like that. Uh, whatever does the trick. This is a pretty big mouth, so this will work for now. And I just start by taking it across the wood and, and get me a, most of that cut out of there. Then I might take a, a V tool. Uh, this is a soft V. Get, get that up closer so you can see what I did there. Okay, then I'm going to take this soft V and kind of go around the outline of the mouth that I put in there. What brand is that soft V you're using there, Ralph? Looks like an OC. It's a Denny, so it's a pretty old one. Because Denny sold the OCC tools, right? And, yeah, that's right. And what are they now? Somebody's still taking that over, aren't they? Is it KCT? I'm not sure. Yeah, KCT. Yeah. A good tool. I tell you what, I've got a menagerie of tools because I, when I get a chance to buy them up used, if they're not too bad, I, I go, I get a, I'll get a bunch of them if I can if somebody's selling them out, because uh, 
sometimes the older tools are better than the newer ones. And Steel I was going to say, uh, Bob Statlander is going to be at the show, and uh, he carries those KCT tools. So if somebody's looking for something like that, he'll probably have them there. Bob Statlander's a a wealth of knowledge. I tell you, he's a smart guy, and he's a super good carver too. Yeah, you get a chance to pick his brain, take advantage. He'll be one of our judges. I, I th he's also doing a presentation, so he's going to be a busy guy. Okay, what I've done so far is um, kind of roughed out uh, the nose and eye area and started on the, the mouth, uh, put a little bit of work into the mouth where I um, started cutting the teeth back. I'll come back later and, and get to that. I'm going to go up here now to uh, work on the nose a little bit more. So I'm going to take this same uh, Denny soft V that I've got here. Let me go back to my pencil first, though, so I can kind of get my bearings. I like having these lines drawn in and help me know where I want to go. Okay. All right. So now I got some a road map here. Go in. Start putting in the sides of the nose. Come across. Sorry if I'm getting this out of the line here. There we go. So that's where I am so far. And clean it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to get a, a, um, a U gouge. I can find the one I'm looking for. Well, he's in the last place you look. Let's see. All right. Come over here, do a little cleanup. Start working on that nose a little bit. Open up the eye a little bit. Turn it around. Do the same thing on the other side. Just let's just see what I've got so far. I don't know if this lighting is that great, but you can see some shadows. All right, I'm going to. Come up beside the nose a little bit more here and uh, shape that a bit. We'll come up above the forehead or on the forehead above the eyes and start patting the forehead back a bit to expose some eyebrow.
All right, now I'm going to move down to the side a little bit. Got to get all these cut marks off of here. Consequently, I'm going to put in a lower lip here. So I'm going to come down with this. It's a, probably about a number seven. What is it? Number six. All right, so I'm coming down below the lower lip and give myself plenty of room there. So I've probably got a quarter of an inch space between my cut and the, the bottom of the lower lip at that point. So this is the cut that I just put in there. And this is a lower lip up here. So as I cut more of that in, as I go up towards the corner of the mouth, I'm going to come closer to the mouth so that it'll look like that lower lip kind of drops down at an angle a little bit. Was there a question? Okay. No, I think we just had somebody unmute. Okay. Right below the biggest part of the lower lip, I'm going to recess that a little bit more. And round over a little bit in there. I'm going to come back up here too now and work on this mouth a little bit. Okay. Uh, is, there any, is there anywhere you go for um, references as far as expression or do you just do it the way, you know, whatever you make up? Uh, yeah, you know, if if you got a particular expression in mind that you want to practice, um, Pinterest is a great tool for looking stuff up like that, or even just Google. If you Google something uh, like uh, Crooked Smile and then click up at the top on images, and so it'll just show you pictures, uh, Pinterest or Google, either one are good for that. Um and as you, if you've had classes, I know a lot of you guys are experienced carvers, but not all of you. So if you get a chance to take classes with some of these experienced guys, you know, pick their brains about how they do things. I know uh, I took some classes with Peter Wartell, and he was great with expressions. And he taught me a lot about how to find expression. And, um, you know, sometimes you find out too that, uh, just because a face doesn't normally look that way doesn't mean you can't carve it that way. It's, if you take some artistic license. So what I'm doing now is uh, I've, I've kind of got where, uh, let me turn this around, Let's see. All right, so, sorry, there we go. You can kind of see where I drew my lines in for the bottom of the teeth and I kind of drew some pencil marks where the teeth might go. So I'm coming across now and recessing under the teeth so I can uh, start removing the wood below the teeth. And on this guy, I'm only gonna put in upper teeth. The other part of the mouth that's exposed will just become tongue. And you'll see how that kind of emerges as we go. And as I get a chance here, I'm going to come over to the sides and take these saw marks off of here. Round over a bit. As I get up to the eye area, and I'm, I'm jumping around here a little bit, but that's kind of the way I carve. <laughs> I get up here to the round the eyes. I'm going to take in the area beside the eyes more. It'll give it a little more natural look and some curvature. And you'll see the kind of go from the, the cheek area up into the eye area with some curve. And as you do that, you can see how the, you need to adjust the, the facial curve to above the cheek and below the eye there.
Dave Stetson came to Charlotte a few years back and did a class on, on facial characteristics. I still got that plaster cast I bought from you, Dave. That that comes in handy too. Just having some kind of a reference so you know where the sections of the face, the bones are under that skin. You know, it, uh, you wouldn't think, well, it's just a butthead. What difference does it make? But it, it's going to help you no matter what you're carving. All right. At this point, I'm going to use this wide gouge to come up the side of the face a little bit, remove some of these saw marks and start shaping a little bit more. And I know there's a cheek in here, so I got to cut out wood to make that cheek pop out. So kind of above the mouth, but below the cheek. Make some curves in there. All right. Now, a lot of times I don't put any hair on these guys, but if I'm going to do that, I need to decide to do that pretty soon here. Um, I think I'm going to leave this guy bald. But uh, it would be real easy to come up here and just, you know, draw a, a patch of hair in there and recess it underneath. Okay, get back down to the mouth. Let's see. Okay, the, the teeth, they don't, you know, a lot of times you look at somebody and they're smiling and you think, well, the teeth just go straight across, but they, you know, they they sink back into the side of the face inside the mouth. So if you kind of curve around a little bit on the sides there, it'll give you more room to adjust the mouth if you need to. And I can take my nose a little bit deeper as well. Now, I came up beside the nose, but I didn't come in behind it, so I can still do some adjustment. Once you make a cut behind that nose to make that nostril flare, you're kind of stuck. So I don't want to put that in until I'm done. Hey, Rod, is there a place where people can buy your carvings, or do you sell any of them? I do. Uh, I I live in Charlotte, and uh, I spend a lot of time in the mountains up in Little Switzerland, North Carolina. And uh, we have a little craft fair up there once a year in Little Switzerland that I sell things at. And we have um, a Little Switzerland bookstore, Books and Beans. They have a gallery upstairs where we're able to put stuff. So I sell a little bit of stuff up there, too. And I have a few regular customers that call me and order something now and then. But I don't really have anywhere else that I sell. So if somebody wants to buy something, they can contact me directly. I am on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, let's see. Is the lighting okay there? Can you see that okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right. Let's see. Along the bottom of the mouth here, you know, um, the drawing in where the lip is going to come out. So this part in here that I'm making lines on will be the tongue. So I've got to shape it. 
So I'm going to put a stop cut right along in here where this line is. And then I'll start shaping this tongue by coming around and putting some uh, triangular cuts in here. So we'll start by doing this stop cut. And this is kind of a hard one. What's your price structure? Do you have a, something you go by as far as pricing your items when you sell them? Depends on how much I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these butt heads, you know, I, I sell these at the craft fair for 15 to $20 a piece. Um, there's just not a lot of time in them. They're mostly just done for fun. All right, I want to make sure it, it it's clear where the tongue stops and the lip begins. Now, if the lip looks like it's sticking out too much to me, I can adjust that. But once I got to kind of figure out where things stop and start, or you won't like the finished product. So I'm uh, coming across to the edges here and cutting away chips down to stop cut. And at this point, you can kind of start to see the, the tongue come out of there, but it's, it's too flat in here. So I've got to take it back under the teeth. And I don't want to carboy too much at a time so I'll take it a little bit at a time and mainly I don't want to take away too much at a time because you start bearing down too much this thing can slip in your hand and all of a sudden you got a knife in your hand okay so just a few cuts here you can see that the uh, tongue looks like it's coming from back in the mouth now, from under the tongue, under the teeth. So uh, I'll adjust that upper lip a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, I want to make the lower lip have the look that it's going under the upper lip. So I'm going to do a little short stop cut there and then make a cut up to that. So now with that little cut, it looks a lot better. You, Get, if the shadow catches it right, you can see how the um, lower lip's going up under the upper lip. Same thing on the other side. Now I'll do a little cleanup. <clears throat> Hey, Rod, you got a stand there at the back of your table that you have the butt head sitting in. So that something you made or have you just used like a knife holder or what is that? This here? Uh, yeah. I made that this afternoon. <laughs> it's hard to find something these things will sit in. Um, I've got this set of uh, drill bits, um, Forstner bits, but they only go up to one inch. And all those, these are one by ones on the corners. They're more than that. So um, probably too much information here. But so anyway, so I used a, a one-inch Forstner bit just on the edges so they stick out a little bit. 
but still hold them. And then I went in and carved a little edge out so they could kind of slide down in there. Um, and that's just a piece of balsa wood. And it's real easy to carve. Okay. Now, starting to get a little bit of personality on this guy. He's got a little tweaking to do yet still, but uh, on this upper lip, I'm going to stick my blade in and kind of plant it right up here above the teeth and below the lip, and I'm going to twist it and pull it down as I come in this direction. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side, and hopefully, if, if it comes out right, it'll have the appearance. Can you see my blade okay there? Yeah, that's it'll, good. It'll have a more of a lip-like appearance when I'm done. Twisting that blade makes it make funny noises. Okay, so you can kind of see what that does. And it gives some, a lot of times it'll make that little corner come out of the upper lip there. So you can see that. But um, tweak that a little bit, round it off. And it gives you a little bit of a upper lip look there. Tweak this lower lip a little bit. So when you don't have anything to do on a Sunday afternoon, you can make butt heads. All right, let's see. First time I saw one of these was at the Ohio show in Dayton. There was a club selling a selling these and they had a basket full of them. They were selling for five dollars a piece. In fact, I think I have somewhere around here. I have the first. Yeah, here's the first one I ever got. It's one of theirs. And uh, they put a key ring on it. And uh, I thought that was really cute. Then when you turn it over and you see the butt, it uh, makes you chuckle. So if you are, if you do these and happen to sell them at a, a craft shit sale or something, and somebody picks one up and smiles, make sure they turn it over and see the butt because then they'll laugh. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go into these eyes a little bit now. This is a, you can see where I'm at on the mouth now. I've got a lot done there, but it still needs some cleanup. Let me go up here and work on this eye a little bit, or I'll run out of time. Okay, so I want to. Just put a dot where my inside corners are and find my outside corners. Try to make them about the same length. Um, I, I tend to drop my outside corners a little bit, but it, on these things, it's, uh, you know, play around with something and to see what you like. When I'm drawing these upper lids in, I'll usually go up about one third and then down two thirds or go up half, down half, something like that. Then come around the bottom. Try to get out of your way so you can see here. There we go.
And if I'm doing a big smile, like this guy's got an open mouth it's, and it's kind of a smile. But if it's a big smile, one of the things I like to try and play with, because I'm always trying to get better at it, is making the eyes look like they're smiling too. Because if you do just a plain old eye and the and you got that big old smile down there, it looks good, but it looks better if you can maybe curve the bottom lid up a little bit. So it looks a little bit like uh, the cheek is pushing the lower lid up. At least that's what I've been working with lately. And it kind of works. Do this outside corner. All I'm doing here is a three-point cut. Popping out that little pyramid. Okay, so this is where I'm at right now. You can see my pencil marks there. You can hopefully see the little corners that I've taken out on both sides there. And I'm going to come inside the eye with my knife and cut up two. Did I do my stop cut there? I think I did along that pencil mark. This is a very shallow stop cut, just enough so that when you cut up to it, that little sliver will come out. I'll do the same over here. Like I've been doing some classes occasionally up at John C. Campbell Folk School the last couple of years. So uh, if anybody's looking for a good carving class and a week in the mountains, there's a lot of good carvers that teach up there. So check out John C. Campbell Folk School. They need our support. And Rod, is that a whole week up there? The class I'm doing this summer is a five-day class, so it's just a little less than a week. Gotcha. But, uh, these schools took a big hit on COVID, too. Okay, I'm doing the other little... Hard to hold this so y'all can see it, and I can see it, too. That's... <laughs> There, there we go. Get a little sliver out of there. All right. How am I doing on time? Uh, we're right at 10 after 4. Okay. All right. So next thing I'm going to work on is these smile lines coming off of the nose. So they're going to come around the outside of the mouth. And that'll help me the last cuts of the nose. So there's the pencil marks I've got drawn in. All right, I'm going to push my knife in a little bit. Um, I'm kind of looking for that lobe to come out the shape of it when I do this cup. So I'm going to put it up into the side of the nose a bit. And you're working with a small piece of wood here. So try not to force it too much because your little chips may come out that you don't want to. And make sure your knife is sharp. Probably the biggest mistake the new carvers make is their tools aren't sharp enough. Okay, the um, that's wanting to come out a little bit right there, but it's okay, I think. Okay, so there's that cut I made. Now I've got I've got this cut made. I need to and get this load to load to pop out a little bit. So. I'm going to come around on the side of the head here 
where I want that lobe to be and just do a small stop cut. And that forms this little pyramid in here, right here. So can I just make sure you guys can see that. So I'm just going to come around and that will just pop out. There's not much wood holding it in. So that has the effect of making the nose go further back into the face there. And I'll have to come over here and clean that up. Then I'll do the same thing, same steps over here. And the the second sliver cut here I'm making, obviously it's coming from inside and it's going at an angle to that first cut, but I don't want to go too far in because I'll end up cutting off wood that I don't want to cut off. So it's kind of a little ticklish game there. All right, so that's that side cut. We'll come in here on the side Now, if you want to angle the bottom of the nose, you can do that now. Then we gotta put some nostrils in here so we can breathe. And so we'll shoot for right around in there. So I'm going to use this number, number, number nine, I guess. Yeah. When I'm doing this, I kind of rest the tool on my thumb and angle it in, but I kind of aim it. And then when I'm ready, I'll just push slowly in. And I'm trying to aim it such that a little of the, the nostril may come off on the top there or the nose. And then I can come in here with a knife and cut that little wood booger out there. And I come over here, do the same thing. I want to be careful also over the center line of the nose, because you'll have one, one huge nostril there instead of two. All right, so he's starting to come to life here a little bit. You know, if, if you're doing a mouth, it's a caricature. You don't have to put all the teeth in. Don't get wrapped up in, in stuff like that. You don't even have to put any of these little marks in to separate the teeth, but I'm probably just going to put one in here. Sometimes I'll do more. You know, this guy's got quite a few, but it just depends on the look you're going for at the time. All right, so 
he needs a little tweaking, but uh, I don't want to get wrapped up too much in that right now because I'm running out of time. So let me just kind of do a few little details here. And while you're finishing that up, Rod, do you want to talk to us a little bit about your painting technique and uh, whether or not you uh, pre-treat and that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I, I I did not paint before I started with carving, so I'm an even worse painter than I am a carver. But um, when I started painting these things, um, there was a, a color called flesh color on the market, and I don't think it's available anymore. Uh, so what I've been buying is, uh, I start with a beige color, uh, I, just whatever Michaels has. And, um, there also used to be this stuff called shading flesh. So I could add this in to this to make it a little bit darker if I wanted to, or to darken some of the areas like the lips, um, but I've kind of started using this fire coral more, and that uh, that'll not only help you shade the lips, but it'll um, allow you to just water it down a little bit and, and put the little bit of the the rosy cheek color in the cheeks and uh, um, the tongue and the lips. Um, Tips of the ears, places. Well, these don't have ears, but they could have. So, uh, on the flesh, that's pretty much what I use. And then, whatever, uh, if when I'm painting eyes, I just use titanium white or whatever else I got. And um, the eyes will sometimes be green or blue, and sometimes just black. And uh, well, this one's sort of a cartoon eye, but uh, that's just black, and this guy's just black with a white dot on him. And this guy's just just black. I don't have. I don't think I can put a white dot on that one. And then sometimes I'll even put eyes on him. I'll put a maybe a little, little tiny little mark in there with a, a knife or a small gouge to make it look like there could be an eye there. Um, hair, if I put hair on them, um, I really like to use this burnt sienna. You know, it's just a basic color, but I like that color for hair. And sometimes just black, or this is uh, just pretty much a basic brown. I might have put some uh, umber in there. But uh, you can kind of see on this one, especially where I use some of that fire coral. And the, the, uh, the, the tongue has a lot of it. And uh, this, one, this one's done in the wintertime, so you had to have a toboggan on. I, uh, I have I have fun doing these. Sometimes you you know if you want to make one for a friend, uh, experiment with making it look like them. Uh, you might not get very close, but you could at least try and uh, put different kinds of hats on them. I, I used to put a little beret on one every now and then and call him Frenchy. Uh, and that's another thing. If you're trying to sell these things at craft fairs, people like little details and stories like that. But uh, I'd say just have fun with it, you know, uh, work on the wrinkles on the scalp or the uh, forehead. You know, there's usually some reddish color up there, too. And uh, you look around the the marks on around the mouth. There's wherever there's wrinkles, there's usually a little bit of red in there. Look, it's like the life color. Uh, 
this guy, I, I put a little bit of, uh, I don't really think that's black. I think it's kind of a, a stone color. I don't remember what it was right now on his beard. And I hadn't colored beards too much before. So this kind of an experiment came out all right. Uh, whoops, sorry, hit my camera. Um, this is fun. I, uh, I was just, uh, you know, the playing with moving body parts around, like, okay, his, his mouth obviously is much further down from his nose than it should be, but it makes for an interesting look, and it's just kind of fun to play with. Uh, you know, make their teeth stick out a little bit. All right, Rod, well, we're coming up on about 25 after four. I want to open the floor up to see if there's any other questions that we have from the audience regarding this demonstration sure. today. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to say thanks for coming on and doing the demonstration. Uh, remind everybody, Charlotte Wood Carving or Charlotte Showcase of Wood Carving is coming up uh, April the 26th through the 28th. Uh, if you get a chance, get down there. I know uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, Dave Levy's going to be there. Uh, again, Rod will be there. Freddie Pace will be there. There'll be, probably be a bunch of people that you recognize from these meetings. A lot of people that uh, that you know from the carving community. Maybe Pat Coffee will be down there. Um, Hopefully, uh, you'll see a lot of people there, and uh, you can get a chance to talk to them and uh, learn from them while you're down there. It's a great show. I've gone uh, 17, I think, of the 18 years that I've been carving. I've been uh, to the Charlotte Show. It's one of my favorite places to go every year, and I uh, look forward to getting back down there this year. So uh, if you get a chance, come down, check it out, stay for the weekend, compete, uh, participate in the carving competition. You'll be glad that you did. So uh, hopefully you all can jo uh, join us down there. Uh, remind everybody again, uh, no show next week. Uh, we'll meet again on the 20th. I uh, want to remind you all about some classes that are coming up. Uh, try to get signed up for these. Dave Stetson that's on with us today has got a class coming up on June the 1st. Uh, that's wood carving a five-piece cowboy uh, and friends. So if you want to get in that class, contact Dave, get signed up. It's going to be a great opportunity uh, to learn from one of the best carvers out there and also uh, learn how to carve a cowboy, which, uh, you know, a lot of people like to do, but they don't really accomplish it too well. So uh, if you want to learn that, get out there with uh, with Dave and get signed up. Uh, Janet Cordell has a class coming up on the 26th. Uh, I think she's carving uh, um, a horse jumping a fence. Uh, so if you're interested in that, contact Janet and get signed up for that. You can find all that out there on uh, Wood Carving Academy's website. Um, so if you want to go out and check out Wood Carving Academy, you can find out about the workshops. You can also sign up for past uh, classes that's been offered. Uh, make sure you go out, subscribe there. Uh, great, some, some great instruction, great uh, information for carvers, and you can learn at your own pace. So make sure you check that out. Uh, I want to say thanks again, Rod, for coming on today. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this has been the International Association of Wood Carvers, where wood carvers are helping wood carvers. So uh, we'll see you all again. Uh, on the 20th of April, and I'll be advertising that on social media. So we'll see you all then. We're going to we'll do just to um, refresh your memory. Um, basically, it's just an intro of, hey, I'm Rod Gallen uh, with Car the Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Show or however you want to um, do the Charlotte Show or the uh, Carving Club, whatever you want to do. Um, and just welcome to the International Association of Wood Carvers. You could also, if you want, you can say, I'm going to be doing a little demo today, uh, telling you about the show, you know, just a little intro of that, but just make sure Rod Gatlin, biggest part, connection to carving, and then welcome to International Association of Wood Carvers. Is that cool? Okay, that's fine. And we can do it as many takes as you need to. Um, so... I will mute my microphone and you can go whenever you are ready. Hello, my name is Rod Gatlin and welcome to the uh, International Woodcarvers Association. I'm with the Charlotte Woodcarvers Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we'll be talking about our annual showcase of wood carvings today. Excellent. Let's that do works. one last take, if you don't mind. And let's do International sure. Association of Woodcarvers. 
or okay. IAWC, whichever is easier. IAWC okay. might be easier. And it's all a go whenever you want. 